Hey guys, back with a follow-up tutorial on the particles following the player thingy. So we've got another two and a third approach that I cannot create because I don't have a clue about it. So let's get into it. Uh, the first thing is the location keyframes approach. I actually map a every 0.1 seconds the location of the player and then make the actual particle system follow these scheme frames interpolate through them so it can't go through walls and it just follows the path of the player take a look at this so it's chasing me using some debug messages but i can do full circle and it will just keep working on my path actually without touching the walls or without it <coughs> intersecting with anything it's just perfect you can just uh, change the amount of keyframes you want per second and you can also make the speed bigger and greater so it is not that slow for example and you can also add some modifications so it does not just stay on the butt of the character when it gets close you can like ban it all occasion if it gets close or something like that so let's see how this works First things first, the initialization. We've got our target actor, which is what we're going to follow. Our location keyframes array of vectors. And what we essentially do is on the begin play, we set the timer and the target actor. The timer runs every 0.1 seconds and is looping. So it runs again and again and again. And every time we add a new keyframe which is essentially our current actor location to the location keyframes array which is like a collection of all the previous locations the player walked so then in the event tick we actually check we first interpolate with a constant rate because we don't want teasing we don't want the animation to take forever we just want a constant speed of 300 in my case with a current of our default scene root because this time we're not moving the particle system we're moving the whole actor towards the player and the target location would be the last one of the location keyframes so if you know how arrays work the first element you put in has an index of zero and the last element have an index of array's length minus one so this is how we get the first keyframe that we need to that we recorded back here then we check if this result is actually nearly equal so with uh, this default flow total tolerance of our current position now if we haven't reached the keyframe with this check for example we just keep setting world location till we reach it if we reach it and we have another keyframe on the array because we never want to access an empty array this can lead to numerous errors and stuff that we don't want to happen so if it's uh, the length is greater or equal than one so if you've got two or more keyframes in the array we remove the first one and we print the debug string which you can ignore now I want you to really understand this part because we don't want an empty array because if there is an empty array the projectile is going to start uh, lerping its location towards the 0, 0.0.0 vector which is like the center of the world or origin or whatever you want to call it simple queuing stuff here now about this ambience I'm talking about uh, in the next topic so if the uh, if the projectile is somewhat idling near the character or it's like close to it or it's waiting in some place we can add some good idling animations we can make it oscillate like this one for example we don't need you sir anymore so take a look at this it's actually doing a random oscillation each time this time it's circle the next time we play it's kind of different it's like up and down and crazy 
next time it's even different it's like goes inside a bit goes up more up and down this is the ambience now it's basically basically simple trigonometry but i'll explain to you what happens here so on our begin play we grab three random values with an indirect range you can change them to whatever you want so i can for example set this thing to 400 and then hopefully if we play enough times it will be way huge difference there we go check this swirling motion now it's basically an oscillation with cosines and sines which basically trigonometry equations which are harmonic by definition and we just grab some amplitudes and then oscillate the particle system using uh, not adding a local offset because we just want to move the whole the only the particle system and keep track of it so we just alter its world position using the default scene root as the origin that's basic vector math if you don't know what i'm talking about you should probably do some research on vector math so basically we map uh, a value to the time passed which is like essentially dead last seconds multiplied by a factor added to our empty or in this case zero time passed float variable and then we use that to do a trigonometry function you can use sine and cosine not tangent because the graph of tangent is kind of crazy for what we want to do it can go up to infinity for example and then we'll multiply that by each amplitude we we'll make a vector and then just lerp it this this is included in the lerp because these equations are harmonic and we can change this parameter and alter how fast we want it to do to appear so if i do something like 500 it will go crazy if i do something like 50 it will be even slower and unnoticeable now this happens because we've got a large x amplitude range and yeah that's basically it then we add this locate this vector we calculated which is constantly changing because of the graph of these functions times the amplitude which is actually basic physics for example basic oscillations actually then we add this to all our default scene root so for example if this circle is our default scene root component the circle right there our part particle system does a random orbit around it in a repetitive manner because we're using trigonometry and some smart math so now another thing i want to talk about is global vector fields john is a pretty expert guy i'd say in unreal suggested uh, i could use something like a global vector field to grab all the nearest particles towards the player if I solve this problem or make it work, I'll present it to you guys. So thanks for watching and see you next time.